All right, so this should be the last part. I want to do some final touch-ups, baking instructions, or rather how you should kind of put them in the oven, and then my final thoughts when he comes out. So first off, this is what we have so far, Spike, in his entirety. But to do some final detailing and stuff, Spike's hand looks like there should be something in it, and I always like to kind of draw Spike and, I guess, sculpt Spike and stuff with a cigarette. Just, I don't know, kind of iconic to him. So, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get a little bit of this kind of metallic light brown clay, um, and put, put that aside because I didn't actually want that one first. I need some white. And we're gonna... Just make a really thin, you probably don't even need like a toothpick or anything for this, but just a really thin piece of white. And then I want to take some of that brown and roll it kind of into, again, uh, one of those thin pieces and kind of carefully mush the two together if you can kind of do that. I mean, as long as you have kind of the brown on one end and then the white on the other end, you're good. So that is a cigarette, at least made out of clay. And now we're going to simply put that through his fingers, kind of close it up, and then we can kind of straighten it out. Like that. Just a little kind of detail you know, kind of piece that I think adds to it. Um, and you could have been creative with the pose. Like I said, you could have kind of had it up to his mouth or whatever. But just for me, you know, I wanted to do just that. Um, secondly, I want to kind of make a note that just make sure that he's kind of in a good position. All the kind of toothpicks are hidden. Uh, all the clay is as smooth as it can be and stuff. I think this is probably as good as it uh, is going to be. I, I may have liked to add a little more blue to his shoulders, um, I'm not exactly sure, I th think I might add a little bit, just because it's kind of bothering me, but, depending on how bulky your Spike's shoulders are, then you might not need to do this, I just think the way I kind of, um, did it, need to add a little bit more, and in doing that, it kind of loosened this, so just make sure that's kind of pushed in, don't think a toothpick is really necessary, but, you can always kind of put one in the bottom of his hand, connecting to his pants, just to be sure. Alright, so we got that, and I think that's kind of, well, I was going to say protect us, we got the cigarette, and just make sure that it's kind of all nice and stuff. So now we're going to put it in the oven. So we can do this a couple different ways, and again, I never really feel like I know for certain how, you know, clay model should be put into the oven, because everyone is different. So for this one, I'm suggesting a few things. First, if you didn't care about Spike standing, you could just put him in like this. You could kind of, you know, flatten the bottom of his feet and stuff and hope that he stands up when he comes out. But notice that he's kind of, not so much sloped, but he's kind of over to one side. You know, I guess you could kind of just fix the legs. By the way, make sure all those toothpicks are pushed in as tight as they can be. Super glue fixes that if they come loose, but, you know, just kind of save yourself the hassle. So, you can just lay him down like that and hope that he stands up, or you can kind of do that and push his shoes down and hope that he stands up. But I think that's not a very sure way of um, allowing that to happen. So you can either, if you kind of want to try and kill two birds with one stone, you could either make a stand out of wet clay. Let me just make them really fast. Still going. <laughs> you could either do this. kind of make a stand, or whatever, out of wet clay, kind of, uh, I guess not really put him on it, but fit him to it, this, if you do this, and your clay model falls over, then I have no sympathy for you, because do not stand him up on a stand, it won't work, because he's just too unstable, so don't do that, but you could fit him to the stand, take it off, put both of these components in, and then when he comes out, you can glue him to the stand, or... You could put Spike in the oven like this, and then when he comes out, he'll be hard all over, and you can kind of use, you know, um, his shoes that are then going to be as hard as solid clay 
to kind of push down on a base and then get his shoe imprints and then put just the base in the oven and then take it out and then glue both together. Um, obviously, the latter of those ways is a more sure way of getting him to stand up. But I think... I think I might I might try this. I think I think I'm good enough to kind of do that, and I do want him to stand, so I'm gonna try that, and we'll glue him onto the base when he comes out of the oven. So I'm gonna put him in like that, and we'll see what he looks like when he comes out, along with my final thoughts. Just once again, make sure all the two fixer, and I kind of want to stress that a lot now that this one was a little bit loose, and that both feet are kind of at the same length, unless you want you know kind of did something different with the pose, but yeah. All right, be back in 20 minutes. All right, so here's Spike out of the oven. I laid him down and stuff exactly as you see here and exactly as I showed before I put him in the oven. I just kind of want to make a note, though, that I guess some colors, which it's not I guess, but they do, I just didn't think that the colors we were using for this one would have done this, and that is change color from before you put them in the oven to after. Like, the blue we were using was a little bit lighter before I put them in the oven, and then when he came out, the blue of his shirt is a little bit darker. Like, you know, the this blue. But that's okay, because it still looks nice. He's still in one piece and stuff. And irony at its best, I purposely laid him down and stuff so that, you know, he wouldn't fall over, and I didn't run a risk of, you know, making a fool of myself on camera and be like, so you guys can stand him up, it's cool, and then have him completely fall over and be a mess. But... Behold, he stands up, and no, that's not just because this is a sloped surface. I went and put him on a flat table, and he stands up, so really kind of fluke there. But pretend he didn't stand up. Um, we're going to kind of glue him onto the stand that I said I was going to do. So once again, lock tight super glue. You don't need a whole lot, just a little, little bit. And then I'm going to try and do this and not mess it up. Um, this may have been actually backwards. I don't actually... Oh, yeah, okay. This is how it was. Because you want to make sure that the glue that you actually put on the bottom of his shoes is hitting the stand so that, you know, he gets glued to the stand. 30 seconds after 30 seconds, it should be pretty good. And there we go. I actually think it might look a little bit better with the stand. Again, kind of going along like a display, display piece aspect. So, I don't think we're going to have any legs falling over or anything like we did with the Fox one. So, I guess this is our finished Spike Spiegel model, so I'll give my final thoughts and stuff. I think for the most part, um, this tutorial was, was pretty good. I will say along the harder side, though, because, it, once again, I haven't sculpted an anime clay model, and for some reason, Spike just proved to be a lot more challenging than any of the other kind of animal, hedgehog, fox-shaped, you know, clay models I've sculpted. And I don't know if that was just because, again, I haven't sculpted an anime clay model, or I have a certain way I want it to look, or just because... I haven't sculpted a spike in a long time, but I did try my hardest and stuff. Sorry for some of the lighting and, you know, some of the focus and stuff of the camera. I It has been brought to my attention that a lot of people are kind of talking about the focus and the lighting and stuff, and yeah, uh, I try and do my best with that, but I really don't like to restrict myself to only recording on sunny days, because if that was the case, I'd maybe get one recording day a weekend, so it seems like. So hopefully maybe I can get a new camera or something soon or get another camera so that when it's time for the really close up you know I can switch cameras or something. So aside from that though, yeah. Um and like I said, th this was the spike and stuff. I tried my hardest to get all the detail and stuff in and for a spike and for, you know, kind of a character I haven't sculpted in such a long time, I think this is pretty good. More or less I will say though that I think the one that I sculpted that I said I was kind of basing this off of, um I guess I'll kind of just show it but this guy I think that one was actually more or less, I want to say, a fluke, because I really can't replicate some of the things I did on that spike. And again, I made it so long ago, at just this obscure time, you know, just why I randomly sculpt the spike, that it's one of those, I guess, mysteries of my clay. I do like this guy, though, however, in the sense that he's large, that he's, you know, a standard, you know, a, a good size model, but he's not this large. You know, this is a little too big, so this is a good size. And, again, for being kind of a human, it's, I would say, this is a small size for tutorial. So, with that said, yeah, this is my Spike Spiegel clay tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed watching Go Clone 999 I hope you enjoyed it because you requested it. And there will be another tutorial next week. Next week, we will dive into Peppy Hair, as requested by Mario Mario Jr. 32. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Until the next Clay tutorial, I'm L Supersonic Q. Finn.